Welcome to the fifth instalment of this journey across the Premier League series, in which we drop the fascinating history behind all the grounds in the Premier League. Today, we're in London. Hey, we're in London, aren't we? To talk about the fascinating history about Chelsea and their ground, Stamford Bridge. You might be saying, hang on, weren't Chelsea founded in 2003? Surely there can't be much to talk about. Good observation. But surprisingly, Chelsea's history goes further back in 2003. I didn't know that either, so this will be new for us too. So let's start off with the elephant in the room here. Who's this geezer Stanford? Why has he got a bridge named after him? To answer that, we need to go back to the Middle Ages, where the name Stamford Bridge basically derives from Samford's Brigger, which is Middle Ages chap for a bridge at a sandy ford. A ford, in case you're wondering, is a part of a river that's shallow enough to cross over, and not that American car company that is renowned for creating models such as the Cougar and the Escort. Moving into modern times, and along comes the Kensington Canal, which was built in the early 19th century and went from Kensington, surprise surprise, down to the River Thames. The canal would be eventually filled in to build a railway which now forms part of the London Overground. Along the route of the canal was a bridge which carried over the Fulham Road which was to be known as Stamford Bridge and if my detective skills are correct is basically this bridge. A stadium would first come to the area in 1877 and would be the home of London Athletics Club which is exactly what it says on the tin being the world's oldest athletics club and is still going strong to the present day. It was in 1904 when football would first come to the stadium, with brothers Gus and Joseph Mears securing a lease to the land with the intention of hosting high profile football matches. The ground was first offered up to Fulham, but they turned it down due to financial reasons. Oh, uh, what? It's gone, it's all gone. What's all gone? The money in your account, it didn't do too well, it's gone. What do you mean, I, I have a hundred dollars. Not anymore you don't, poof. After further consideration, it was decided the brothers would say, Screw this, we form our own football club, Chelsea FC. Once the club was founded, it was time to build a proper stadium, so they called upon good old Archibald Leach to help redevelop it. When the stadium was finished, it would have a capacity of 100,000 spectators. However, as the ground had athletics origins, you can almost be certain it would have that old arch nemesis of West Ham a blooming athletics trek. The stadium would have one stand which Leach had designed to be an exact replica of Fulham Stevenage Road stand with the rest of the ground being an open bowl using excavated soil from building the Piccadilly line to provide high terraces for the fans to stand on. The stadium would remain largely untouched until the 1970s when the club embarked on an ambitious project to renovate Stamford Bridge. This started with the reconstruction of the East Stand, but things went about according to plan as Liverpool's 2014 Premier League title charge. Well, when Gerrard slipped and Denver Barr's in here, out comes Mignolet, but Barr punishes. With costs on the redevelopment soaring to the point where there was no money to do the rest of the stadium, so it was left untouched. Getting real tired of you ducking me, man. Yeah? Oh my god. Yeah. Getting really tired. Where's my money? Where's my money? This would leave Operation Remove the Athletics Trap in tatters, with only one quarter of the job being done, and made the stadium all look rather silly from a bird's eye view. In the 1980s, Chelsea suffered from a spate of football hooliganism which resulted in the chairman, Ken Bates, to build an electric fence around the pitch, similar to what was used on his dairy farm. However, it would never be switched on, just like Chelsea's performances during the early 1980s. The Taylor Report in the early 1990s would require Stamford Bridge to be an all-seater stadium and allow Operation Remove the Athletics Trek to be completed and all stands to have roofs, taking the capacity of the stadium to 34,000 spectators. As Russian money started to pour into the club during the early 2000s, there has been increasing speculation about Chelsea's future at Stamford Bridge, with there being proposals in the past 
for Chelsea to move into Battersea Power Station. However, with the owners of Stamford Bridge being a non-profit organisation called Chelsea Pitch Owners, they have an agreement that should Chelsea move out of Stamford Bridge, they would not be able to call themselves Chelsea anymore. The result of this agreement may be why more emphasis has been on Chelsea expanding Stamford Bridge itself and there were proposals to make it into this beauty of a stadium. However, these were shelved too. So for the time being, Stamford Bridge will remain untouched with the fans singing the most original song in football, Chelsea, 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 to their heart's content. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider Chris Brassen that subscribe button. And join us as we carry on our journey across the Premier League. Next up, it's that team who stays true to their South London roots, not looking at any team in particular. Arsenal, Arsenal, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Crystal Palace and their ground, Selhurst Park. This has been a civil conversation and I will see you in the next video.